Hey everyone, welcome back to FPL Fran. Today's video is going to be my first draft selection for match day four. We have obviously seen a lot of group play so far, and the tournament has been extremely intriguing. We've seen some major results, for example, like Georgia making it all the way through towards the knockout stages, and of course, you know, a little bit of a collapse from Portugal, of course, whilst rotating. But for the most part, I think, you know, what we've understood so far is that some of the dominant teams are very strong in certain phases of play. For example, England, you'll see, of course, very defensive, but at the same time, have landed themselves within an amazing corner of the, the draw. At the same time, some teams like France, a little bit dis disappointing equally, but also in a tough side of the draw. And then I'd say Spain and Germany have probably been the two teams that have shown the most when it comes to probably playing above the level of their talent on paper. But of course, these are big nations anyways. Within some of the smaller teams, I would say definitely Austria have shown to me the, br the brightest. They've shown to be a very competent attacking team. And there are certainly players that I would consider from those teams. But because my draft selection is very much based on my own strategy i'm planning to use the wild card and, and and i will be prepared to use the chip you know if things don't go to plan but right now i think because we have the wild card as an insurance blanket it makes the most sense to target the easiest fixtures on paper for match day four and go heavy into those teams and that's sort of how i've, I've built up the logic of my draft now starting with the defense here with my draft i really do think that england once again have been such a strong team you'll be not surprised at all to find out that i have a backbone of triple england defense now in terms of the clean sheet odds what i've looked from for example market odds and obviously just watching so far england have actually conceded the least amount of xg within this tournament so that's something to point out as much as they've been boring they have been strong defensively so i do like guehi because he's been absolutely insane in ball recoveries he's so much better at ball recoveries than any other english defender um, and walker i've actually chosen just because of security of minutes because we have i think a lack of understanding of course of let's say Shaw's situation and whether he's going to start for uh, match day four of course whilst i'd like to probably tempt myself a trip here which i could because i actually have 0 0.5 million in, in the budget here to allow myself the upgrade from walker the trip here if you consider it an upgrade i would say i would still go walker for now someone who's obviously i'd say more key to to the system particularly if let's say someone let's say like Shaw comes back and as you can see for example uh, we saw let's say a trent substitution in the game and i do think england played reasonably well with trent at right back but obviously it was very very small sample size however now i would go with pickford as well just simply because for all, for all the keepers that actually have the best clean sheet odds it's really between england spain and portugal and, and ultimately i'm just going to go with the keepers that are the cheapest here that also support these clean sheets which would be pickford and diogo costa so that's sort of how i've decided that in defense the reason why i've actually not gone for Cancelo is because i still think that you can get a cost saving on him and i do think nuno mendes has proven to be very vital to this portuguese team whether he's actually playing sort of a center backish role um, or a left left back role and they're trying to sort of attack and push on the gas he's proven to be very effective on both sides of the field given that his pace is useful obviously for defense as well but then in the offensive side of the game we've seen of course the contribution to that own goal for example from himself so i do like nuno mendes for that reason in terms of cheaping up on the spanish defense i've done i've taken the same logic again the spanish defense is mostly going to be carvajal laporte lenormand and cucurea now i don't think there's any need necessarily to spend extra money on laporte and carvajal or even unai simon so um, as a spaniard i'm very much happy to back cucurea and lenormand both 4.5 million at an amazing price point i do not think they've lost their spots at all within their teams and ultimately you just have access to one of the best defenses with one of the best fixtures versus Georgia here. And that's that. Now, in terms of my midfield, the way I've gone about this is, unfortunately, of course, the teams to target, in my opinion, would still be, for example, Portugal. However, with the Portuguese midfield, I really think there's only two midfielders. It's really Bruno Fernandes or it's Vitinha. Now, Vitinha, for me, I would probably go for if I didn't have as much budget in the game. But because I do, I'd rather go for more offensive players. And in this case, of course, I've gone for Bruno. In the midfield as well, I've supported these two players with Musial and Gundo. Now, of course, Denmark are a very tough opponent for Germany. And potentially, this is the one position, I would say, where you could maybe afford to drop one of the German midfielders. Um, I still think that Germany, of course, are a strong team. And I think when it comes to the fixtures to target, I do think you can argue that maybe going for a Sabitzer from Austria could make more sense. However, I think the only thing that's really missing from my draft is that I will lack day four players, right? There's no sort of rotation for the captaincy, but you can also make an argument on the flip side that none of the captaincy options on match day four are amazing. Outside of maybe if you'd like to invest into, for example, the Dutch team, but it's still unlikely that you'd like to do so. And 
Uh, for that reason, I've not actually chosen any day four players because it's sort of a hedge against the great fixtures that we have between day day one, day two, and day three. So that's sort of my thoughts. It's not so nice that, of course, the Spanish fixture is paired with the English fixture in terms of day of play. But as I said, I do think that these are the fixtures to target anyway. So I'm just going to build my draft around that concept, knowing that, I, as I said, I have that sort of insurance blanket. So that's ultimately why we're going with these players. And, and Musiala and Gundo, for me, still have the most secure minutes in the German team team in different game states. Now we did see Musiala get subbed off a little bit earlier in match day three, but I do think that that's simply because the match potentially was not as important for Germany per se. And also, I, th I think the more important point is that he has played much more minutes than some of the other sort of midfielders like a Wurz or the other attacker in Havertz. Just looking at the average minutes of Musiala being played under Nagelsmann compared to Havertz and Wurz, it's very clear that he's got better minutes. Gundo is obviously a case where he's a more mature player, a more experienced player. His minutes before the tournament were a lot poorer. But actually, as the tournament has played on, we've seen Gundo play a lot more minutes, which I think we'll continue to see as a trend. Now, of course, since we're targeting this specific fixture, we've gone for Gundo here. But I do think, once again, you can definitely sidestep a Musial or Gundo to just simply go for a Sapitzer as well. I think he's definitely a great pick, given that the Austrian fixture is actually not bad whatsoever. Uh, however, I've decided to back Germany in this situation, and that's simply because I've still liked what we've seen for the most part for Germany. And Switzerland, to be fair, actually did defend very well versus Germany. I don't think it was the case that Germany were awful within that match, but rather that the Swiss actually defended very well. And even though Denmark have actually, for the most part, defended well within this tournament, I think that you can argue that they've also faced some pretty tame attacks. If anything, most of that group, Group C, were very poor when it came to XG within their own teams. There was no sort of specific fixture that was crazy with XG. For example, England actually averaged less than one XG for all of their matches, and that includes the one goal that they scored versus Serbia as well. So I do think that versus a, a pretty threatening German team that have proven to be so far the, the leading XG team within the tournament, you can maybe just buy into that German attack just a little bit more. Um, as far as Spain, Spain actually just have a brilliant fixture, both on the offensive and defensive side. And, and what we've seen so far within the tournament in terms of the chances that they've created, I would say backs that. Now, it is the or it has been the case so far that Pedri and uh, Lamine Yamal and even Nico Williams have gotten into great attacking positions but haven't necessarily gotten you know the, the returns requisite for that now Yamal has actually gotten an assist so far um, so has Pedri to be fair but it was, that was more of a pass and a layoff to a, a, what I would call a Fabian Ruiz solo goal and Yamal has been extremely exciting most particularly within the Italy game and then obviously Spain rotated uh, in match day three now I think what's nice is Pedri didn't get many minutes in match day three so the concerns over Pedri's minutes in match day four should be be a little bit diminished in my opinion and I think Pedri is actually very interesting from this point of view so I do like Pedri a lot and obviously as a little bit of a bias Spaniard here I don't mind investing into my players since I'm probably going to not go for Yamal now I think the alternative of course is you can also go for Morata up top you can also go for Yamal up top as well and Yamal obviously a little bit more of a mix between goals and assists less goal dominant than Morata, for example. Morata, obviously someone who you'd expect to be that sort of out and out center forward for Spain, even though sometimes within the structure, he does move a little bit out wide and you've seen him even cross the ball in, for example, for that chance versus Italy as well. And, and, and then of course, he's got an assist as well. As far as, let's say, the front line to sort of pair up with this, I've decided to go with a very boring front line. It's Mbappe, Ronaldo and Kane. Now, Kane so far for this tournament has been awful. I mean, a couple other picks that we picked so far have been pretty blunt as well, to be honest. Luke Kaku has had chances, but he's not scored any of them. Uh, Mbappe, for me, still looks like the most interesting piece of this French team. And to be honest, I think because he's he's so talismanic, I do think that, okay, yes, even though we've seen Kante out of the matches, even though we've seen, for example, Skorupski out of the matches, which, which, which basically actually came from saving a lot of Mbappe shots and Mbappe created chances, you do expect that maybe this French team can kick on a little bit and Mbappe can obviously enjoy a little bit more than what was just one goal versus Poland. But he has opened his account in the Euros um, and I do think he still looks very good. Now with Ronaldo, it's an interesting one where I think he's actually gotten plenty of chances in this tournament, but things haven't necessarily fallen his way. But this Portuguese team are so strong. He is still the focal point of the team when it comes to the chances and how they're built within the offensive phase. And I still think that he's going to have his chances within this match here in particular. So I, I do think Ronaldo makes a lot of sense. Now, Kane, I'm sure a lot of people will look at this and, and question, you know, why go Kane? But simply my answer to you would be, I think it's quite hard still to pick another forward. Potentially another forward that we could look at is, of course, as I said, uh, maybe going for a Spanish forward like Morata, maybe y Yamal. But at the same time, you can definitely consider a Depay or Gakpo. Now, what I don't like between, let's to behind Gakpo, of course, is that I suppose there's a bit of a sharing of the goal share. And I still think that, unfortunately, the Dutch team still look 
pretty blunt at times as well. They obviously did score versus Austria, which was very good. And I'm expecting that the Dutch team can do well again. But here, of course, I, I'm going to have to expect that England will perform a little bit better. For whatever reason, the markets are still super high on England. And I think it makes sense. When you look at the team on paper, you'd still say you'd expect a lot more from them. And we haven't seen it so far, to be honest. But I'm willing to sort of take that plunge here just because I actually like the Spanish midfielders. And the pair up, for example, would be, or the compromise for me would be to maybe, let's say, go Morata or Yamal and then go for, let's say, an English midfielder. Now, I prefer personally still going for Kane, who is a penalty taker, for example, still is in good positions, generally speaking. For example, I think he was pretty close to scoring one goal that was off of, let's say, a Trippier open play cross, which was one of the few chances that Trippier has only created this within this tournament. And I think, you know, those sorts of chances still give me a little bit of faith over Kane. And for that reason, that reason alone, I've gone for Kane, just because I don't really like going for an English midfield at this moment in time. And I still like Kane as an option. Um, so that's sort of why I've gone for this draft. Now, in terms of captaincies, of course, a lot of people get a question once again, you know, why not go for a day four player? Uh, but in my opinion, as I said, in day four, I don't really like the Dutch options much more than, for example, Kane. And when it comes to, let's say, Austria and Turkey, I do like only really the midfielders from Austria. So if I really, for example, find myself in a situation where I don't really like going for double Germany for whatever reason, maybe I'm trying to invest a little bit more into maybe using a wild card later on in the tournament. So let's say around the semifinals as opposed to the quarterfinals, I suppose I could go for an Austrian midfielder to get someone within that top side of the bracket as well that's relatively untapped, right? I could go for a Sabitzer, as I said. I could also go for a Depay slash Gakpo, who I think could be interesting at least and in, in maybe replacing that Kane position because I'm a little bit more confident right now in Mbappe and Ronaldo. Kane is probably the most shaky player within my draft as I said and we definitely can consider Depay but that's day four captaincies. Now going back to it if I was to start captaincies from start to finish I think my first captaincy would probably still be Musiala. For me the most lively player so far from Germany and I think definitely the pick that I, I would be most keen at going for a captaincy option and then the second captaincy option in day two unfortunately you have to pick here between an English option and a Spanish option. Now, I tend to prefer going to back my own team. And I do think Spain have honestly an equivalent fixture to England, potentially even better. Georgia have been very open within the tournament with exception to the Portuguese game. I think Portugal actually didn't have many chances created, but you could see within the Turkish game, you could see within also the game versus the Czechs that there were plenty of chances against Georgia. And I don't think their defense has suddenly changed other than the fact that they have Amardashvili, who is just an incredible goal shot stopper. I actually shared a statistic that showed that he was a top three shot stopper in Europe. Now I'm going to have to hope, of course, that the Spanish players will have to, have to find a way around Marmadashvili and I'm hoping of course that the captaincy punt on that day will probably be someone like Nico Williams who I think could be quite interesting just because I'd probably have a hard time struggling between let's say Pedri and Williams so, so those are the two picks that I think I like the most for my captaincy although I haven't really decided for now then in day three I think we just have a very safe captaincy option in probably Bruno Fernandes versus Slovenia and the reason why I'm going for Bruno Fernandes over Ronaldo is I do think that, once again, when we've seen Bruno play, he's very De Bruyne-like in the sense that he's one of the key chance creators on the pitch. Um, you'd hope, obviously, in a game where, let's say, Bernardo doesn't get most of the goals and assists as part of the equation, that he can actually get that man of the match as well. Um, but I still think that it's a pretty lopsided fixture in favor of Portugal, and I do think that he's a pretty safe captaincy. As I said, of course, in terms of making sure that I have a day four captaincy, I will consider a Dutch forward. I will also consider an Austrian midfielder. I mean, if I'm not going to captain one of the German midfielders anyways, I suppose the argument definitely can be made that I can go for an Austrian midfielder just as a backup. And honestly, Austria have been really good so far and a really good attacking team. So I don't mind that. So let me know what your thoughts are in, on, on the draft. Um, otherwise, I think this is a good early draft to have. I really don't think that I'll be making too many changes. Maybe I'll be changing around how I go about, let's say, Spanish attackers. Maybe maybe it's one midfielder, one forward. Uh, we'll see what happens. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.